Hi guys, uh, so for this edition of Cool Tools, it's not just a single tool that I want to talk about, kind of more so a, a concept uh, of tools, stuff that I stumbled upon the way that really helped me out a lot. Um, kind of all started from doing alignments. So you go to do your toe set and you go to crack this jam nut loose. Well, clearly with the wheel off, say right now, it's wide open, no problem. We get our wrench, we put it on the, you know, we, we put it on like so, no biggie, grab a hammer, you smack it, right? Give it a hit, crack it loose, now you can spin them loose. But when you're doing an alignment, you don't have this kind of room. First of all, your wheel's on, your tire's on. You're on a drive-on rack, you got your big uh, sensor on your wheel, um, and you don't have easy access to that. Now, having the tire on, not necessarily the end of the world, but having the drive on hoist is a bit of a pain in the butt. The ones that I used, it always seemed like no matter what, when I went to put my wrench on this jam nut, that I couldn't get any leverage on there, right? So how do you extend a wrench? You know, some people put a big pipe over there, a cheater pipe, right? Well, I would try that and it would always hit the, the rack. Because keep in mind, right, your, the vehicle, the tires are on, the vehicle is resting on the rack. This here, this jam nut, is awfully close to this wheel. So if we look at the hub, you know, your tire is going to go back to almost where the, the jam nut is. And directly underneath that and protruding in more is still your drive-on hoist. So the inside of your drive-on hoist is past this jam nut. So anytime I went to put anything on there, I'd be hitting stuff. Couldn't use a pipe. Now various people, um, manufacturers, Matco, Mac, whole bunch of people, um, it's rebranded, I don't know who really makes them, but they make these tools that you can put over a wrench, and it's got a handle here, and it's just got these fingers that kind of wrap around it, just kind of extend on the wrench, make it a little longer. Well, you kind of have the same problem as your pipe, right? You're going to hit stuff. So how do you extend a wrench? with giving yourself room. If only you could use, you know, a, a flex head ratchet, then you could get all kinds of room. And, you know, you could use, the, the problem with stuff like that is, what if you got something like, um, you know, your crow feet, right? Well, the problem with the crow foot is it's too short. So you're too close to the head of your ratchet, you're just gonna be binding on that. It ain't gonna work. Um, works in some cases, you know, for your uh, hydraulic lines and stuff like that. Um, neat little trick there if you're going to get crow feet. 21 is really handy. Can't remember if it's Hyundai or Acura. I went to do a rack on one of them. I don't know how the heck you'd get a wrench in there on the line that goes to the rack. Had to use a crow foot. If I didn't have the 21 crow foot, that would have been unpleasant. The other one too is, of course I don't have room for it on here. I do have a 20 mil crow foot. This comes in handy. Um, some hydraulic lines are 20, 20 mil. Um, I <laughs> used that a few times, not just on the old fuel filters, but I've used the 20 mil a few times that saved my butt. But anyways, how do you extend a wrench? So if only you could turn this into a crow foot. Well, guess what? You can, okay? The large set of Allen sockets. This set right here, these are Titans. I think it cost me maybe 50 bucks. And you know what? I rigged up, I found a bolt and two nuts that were 24 mil. And I just put them into a socket, welded it up, kind of ground it down a little bit. Not the prettiest job, but you get the idea. That's a 24 mil Allen socket. Well, you can see that, right? And Allen's just an inverse of one of those, right? So, of course, the, whoa, don't mean to move you. The Titan set was missing a couple sizes, but you can buy them individually. Um, I think, whoa, moving again. I think, I think the ones that were missing on the Titan set, um, 
Did I buy a replacement of those Titans? Yeah, I did, I think. So I don't think it had the 21. Um, maybe it didn't have the 17. But I replaced them all with Titan sockets. And they were cheap. They weren't very expensive at all. Not like a Snap-on. And then, of course, this 24 that I rigged up. Yeah, that wasn't very expensive either. So, you see that? Huh? Right? Look at that. Now you have a big, gnarly crowfoot, if you want to call it that. And the beautiful thing about these is you can position that wherever the heck you want so it's out of the way. You can, you know, flex head, right? The the box end is that an offset. You can, so you could either have it this way so the offset's out, so your head's this way. You could flip it around this way so then it's in more, right? You got all kinds of options. And then if we get this out of the way, again, of course, we got all kinds of room, but let's pretend we're on the un underside, right? We wouldn't have that room. So now, right, you could even go at a weird angle like this. Can't wait. Of course, I get one that's tight as heck at the moment. Ah, oh, come on. Come on. There you go. So, yeah, maybe I dropped out of frame a little bit. I don't know. But anyways, these guys here. Allen socket, right? Goes in there. Huh. Makes the light bulb go off. Guess what? This sort of stuff can be usable for things other than just... Other than just doing alignments. Um, you know, I had one... Uh, guy was changing a tranny on a, a Jeep. Newish Wrangler. And taking off... The transfer case nuts. Some of them are a little tight, especially in the Jeeps. The the transmission and the transfer case it fits really tight to the body on the underside, right? So you're getting that top nut off. You you can't really get a full size wrench in there. You're just hitting the body. So you have to use a, a stubby wrench, a small wrench. And well, those nuts can get tight with a bit of age. So a guy called me over. Hey man, uh, can you pull on this thing? Uh, pulling this wrench because he couldn't get it. It's awkward angle. And then, you know, these guys right here. That was a, a 14 mil. So, um, same kind of concept. We grab our 14 mil wrench. I grab the 14 mil socket. Just like that. Well, not even... Oh, I got them over there. But anyways, I grabbed the stubby wrench. So the smaller one than that. Grabbed my 14 mil Allen socket, put it on the end of there. Put uh, the ratchet on this end. So the wrench is sitting like this. My ratchets. Even. So I had it set up like this, right? So the, the nuts right here. The, the body of the vehicle is all the way around this. I'm reaching up and all I got to do is just pull on this thing. And sure, it's a big angle. It's a big L. I'm losing a lot of torque, but you know what? My, my ratchet is so long, I can deliver a lot of torque, even at a, an angle like this. And boom, cracked it loose. No problem. So these got me thinking there's other things other than just the wrenches that this sort of stuff is useful for. Um, but there are, I have a couple of them out here already. There we go. So these guys, There's also these guys, snap on torque adapters. I freaking love them. You can tell by how many of them I have. I went on the truck and I saw these on there for a long time. Only a few of them, only a couple. And I know for a couple years I kind of looked at them and I'm like, you know, I bet those would be handy. But, you know, they cost a couple bucks, $20, $30 each or so. Um, some of the bigger ones are a little bit more, I, I'm assuming. But they always kind of struck me as, you know, I'll bet they'd be useful, especially the 14 
and the, the 916 because some transfer cases aren't 14 mil nuts. They, you, they are 916. You won't get a 14 mil on there very good. I'm like, I'll bet these be useful. So I picked some up and then I ended up getting the full set, buying all the other ones individually because these are my pride and joy. So um, this is the next step, next evolution. Uh, obviously you can't use these for, you know, doing jam nuts and stuff like that. But these things here, they get me out of binds on a daily. Um, I don't regret them one bit. So uh, if you can't afford these or you don't really find yourself really wanting these, um, you know what, the Allen sockets, the thing that's nice about those is you use those anyways, right? Sometimes you need a large Allen socket, but they can convert, the thing that's nice about those is they can convert other stuff that you already have. You already have your, your, your big ratchet, you already have your wrenches. They can convert that to give you a whole plethora of other uses um, on stuff that you already have. Okay, so I just want to mention a couple other instances where I used these Allen sockets that uh, really helped me out quite a bit. One of them being this here. We got ourselves a 96 F350 diesel that we're rebuilding the transmission on. And uh, the front drive shaft. So what Ford likes to do for their drive shaft bolts, they use these uh, 12 point heads. Um, these ones here are 12 mil 12 points that they use on the back of this guy, as well as um, backs and fronts on most of the newer vehicles. So Snap-on makes a, a handy tool if you can fit it in there. Usually you can, sometimes you can't. Um, it's this, uh, you know, half inch drive, semi deep, 12 mil, 12 point swivel, works pretty well. Of course, the fronts on this vehicle here, um, the fronts at the transfer case, I didn't bother taking that end off because I didn't need to. Um, the fronts are eight mil, 12 points. Well, these guys here are bad enough at times for rounding if you're not careful, especially if you're not 100% flush on the heads of these. You know, what happens is you're going kind of quickly, you're, you're a bit of an angle trying to get it in around the uh, drive shaft and one corner will actually lift up a little bit. You'll think you're on there straight and you go to hit it with your impact and boom, you round the head off. Not the end of the world, these are super cheap at the dealership, but you know what, um, you gotta get it off first, right? Especially when they're Loctited. So, this being an ancient vehicle, uh, super rusty, and these being so small, what I wanted to do before I went in head and got the heat, or anything like that, I just wanted to feel them, right? Because if they're willing to come out, then you know what, no sense uh, grabbing the heat, it's just an extra step. Um, of course, with the way that they were situated, you can't get um, any kind of socket in there. Usually for these kind of guys, when I need space, I have over here, underneath my jacket, right here, yeah. Um, these guys right here, right? These are the ones I use for tight access. Well, they only go down to 10 mil. They don't go down to eight. And uh, for stuff like this that can be this tight, I don't always like using, um, I have these guys right here. So these are standards, you know, 5 16 is the same. They are um, 12 point. These worked quite well with getting the bolt out the rest of the way after I cracked it loose but I don't like using um, them to crack it loose because it's really, really small. There's not much depth there. And again, I don't want to round these out because they would be especially annoying to try and get out. So I use eight mil wrench. Of course, yeah, there's no way in heck you're getting those suckers off with just this. So if we go down here, we got our eight mil Allen socket put on our ratchet, you know, 12 point goes on, on the bolt. And then we can get our, if I can do this, come on, come on. And then you can go like this. And then 
just like what I showed with the um, the tie rods and then you got length there and the nice thing about this is it gives you a chance to feel it it gives you a chance to feel it as it's breaking loose then you know for sure okay yes it is coming it's not rounding it's not breaking or anything stupid um, in this case here yeah you could have double wrenched the thing that I don't like about double wrenching well, actually there's a number of things I don't like about double wrenching um, let's see if I can kind of set this up one second I'm gonna get awfully close because you know one hand okay so you got a double wrench right there right well she's awfully flimsy but if you look at your angles you're kind of limited to what you can do with these right um, you kind of have to go sort of this side right here uh, you could flip it around maybe and then you can go down if you have room for that but again you're really limited whereas with using an allen socket well we all have tons of different styles of ratchets right you got your regular 3 8 swivels which we can go to all kinds of different angles there um, you can get uh, come on you know just a, a regular uh, smaller non non swivel or non flex head you know you can get you get the idea you've all seen different ratchets right all different kinds of setups you can do with using the allen sockets you're not limited like you are would be you know if you're double wrenching it um, and sure enough they cracked loose they came out quite nicely and then I was able to finish it off with um, these little guys uh, yes I could have done it other ways but you know what you got this stuff it's there it's handy and uh, you made the job go really nicer the one that really 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 did save the day we'll get the coincidentally it was also an 8 mil if I can oh that's back over here uh, I just thought I was a little more prepared, but I guess I wasn't. I think that is this one. What does that say? Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, the other thing that I used, that I used this for recently, and I did a little video on it, was doing an oil filter housing on a BMW. It was an 07 X5. And they are e torques Now, of course, you can use a 12-point... Um, box end wrench or socket of course on an e-torx so you just have to find the corresponding size that bolt there was an e10 so that corresponds to an 8 mil you just got to play around with it until you find one that fits it nicely and this bolt is buried it's underneath the intake manifold they give you tons of time to do these housings just because the one bolt you can't get to you have to take the intake manifold off well I was able to get this wrench on there and then I was able to kind of use, you know, again, same thing, the eight mil Allen socket. And I was able to crack that bolt loose, which was quite tight, without having to take the intake manifold off. It saved about an hour and a half, at least. Um, you know, it's a little tricky sometimes getting around with this stuff. I, you know, if I had thought about it, I should have used um, my Allen key. Uh, I think this is the 8 mil. No, ha! <laughs> Didn't even grab the right one. Oh, uh, you think it was a Friday or something? I think it is a Friday. Come on. Come on. Oh, my. Oh, I thought I was being prepared. I'm sorry. Uh, there we go. Let's go back to my cubby hole. Ah, forgive me for moving you around so much, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah, so that would have actually worked a lot better for the BMW, but you get the idea. Um, the whole Allen socket business with a wrench, yeah, I started using that on uh, when I was doing alignments. Then I started using it on a lot more stuff, you know, such as the top nuts on um, transfer cases. You know, it, it sits real tight to the body up there. 
Um, they can be less than fun to get off. Sometimes they're stupid tight. So you can use a stubby wrench and you can go on a, on a 90 degree angle, right? Of course, now I have these torque adapters. I use the torque adapters for a lot of stuff. Um, so much so that that uh, BMW that I did, um, that I used the eight mil, the eight mil stubby on, wow, that made me even, uh, I ordered the eight mil one of these, um, just so I have it for next time. But you can't always use these, right? Sometimes you need to get to stuff um, with a open end wrench and you know what these cost money you already got your wrenches so you don't really need these that's a subject for another video anyways but yeah i just wanted to mention a couple other things a couple other instances that i recently used these for that um, really made the job easier in the case of the bmw i would not have been able to have done that i don't believe without taking the intake manifold off and incurring a whole bunch of extra time and in this one here, it just it made it a lot easier. So, it, most people have the regular set of Allens. I highly recommend getting the large set as well. Just get something like Titan or, or Gear Wrench. Don't you don't need um, uh, Mac or, or Snap On for this stuff here. Uh, you know the size of these suckers. You're not gonna break them. So yeah, just wanted to pass that on. Hopefully it's useful for you guys. Um, try it out. See if you like it. I love it. It has saved me a lot in the past. So um, let me know. Uh, have you guys done anything similar to that? Have you kind of hacked up any tools to kind of do uh, a similar subject? Do you do you use the wrench holders, um, the extender wrench? Uh, I know a few people that have used them before. I tried them before. I didn't care for it. Um, do you just double end them or double wrench them? What do you guys do? Uh, leave a comment down below. Always love reading that. Always love kind of learning new things. Um, helps me kind of pass it on. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.